we have seen till now that some misconceptions can lead to conflicts. When I say conflicts, it means situations of conflict. That means that we want to be on both sides simultaneously or both these conditions are desired to exist simultaneously but the necessary conditions for these conditions to succeed are in conflict of each other. However, cost based approach has led to many measurements being put in place in manufacturing organizations. This is from the understanding that if these measurements give us a positive result, the company's cost will go down and we will make more profit. This is nothing but an attempt to make the first equation work better for us. Let me recap the first equation. The first equation said the price is not controlled by me. The price is controlled by the market or a third party. However, what is in my control is cost. The better I manage my costs, more profit I will make. This thinking has led to many efficiency measurements being put in place. We call them efficiency measurements because they are put into various departments. On the assumption that if these measurements show a positive trend or if the departments keep improving on these measurements, the profit of the company will keep going up. However, these efficiency measurements impact the cost component of the equation and as we drive the cost component down, the profit goes up. So these efficiency measurements are interpreted as measurements that improve profit. They improve profit by actually trying to drive the cost down. Let us look at some of these efficiency measurements that one finds in most organizations and especially manufacturing organizations. One of the biggest measurement that we see is has our cost gone down? There is a sophisticated department which ferociously attacks and measures and identifies cost heads and our activities get booked in these cost heads. And since they are individual activities, we are told that please look at reducing the cost of these activities. So this is called a cost measurement. And very often you will see in a company that there is something called has our cost down. Very often you will see in companies the cost figures being presented month on month, quarter on quarter. And if these cost figures show a trend upwards or downwards, the mood of the company fluctuates upwards or downwards. The assumption is that the profit will also go up or down. This cost measurement drives a behavior. Every employee in the company starts focusing on how to reduce cost. And any achievement in trying to bring the cost down is rewarded. How is this thing done? An assumption is made and a mathematical formula used and a calculation done. Right? Very often we see a small project which does a mathematical calculation and says, sir, I have saved the cost of this activity by 10 percent. The overall saving to the company would be 
ten thousand rupees. The person is rewarded for bringing down the cost. However, how many times have you seen the company actually save ten thousand rupees in its overall cost? So somewhere this person feels that my effort of bringing this cost down was negated by somebody else's doing their activity at a higher cost. It is very tough for us in the cost world, in the cost focus world, to actually see what he did actually brought the cost down of his department or did it translate into an increased activity in another department. However, we constantly see cost figures being presented month on month in company performances. Let's look at another local efficiency measurement driven by cost. As we said, that since the performance measurements of the company called profits, ROI, and cash flow cannot be easily converted into local performances, people use local performance measurements thinking that they link to the company performance very well. One such measurement is called utilization. Utilization of a resource. It could be a productive resource, it could be an asset, it could be a human resource or a support function. Let's take a very common example of measuring machine utilization. Was the machine utilized? A work center or a department can have seven to eight machines. Then we go down to see was each one properly utilized? It's quite likely that a department or a section having five machines may be having different rates of production, different capabilities. So the department head spends so much of time and effort on trying to develop or maintain a utilization record for these machines. And very often, these records are kept in the number of units produced, the numbers it should have produced, or the number of hours it worked. And these figures get reviewed by the department head and later on by the plant head. So the focus now is utilization. Various departments or sections of a company process a product which is converted into a final product and this finished good is sold. Now at every stage of production, utilization is important. So when a product moves from section A to section B and then to section C and then to section D, section A measures its utilization, section B measures its utilization, Think similarly section C and section D. Now the driving force or the driving behavior is if I make sure that the utilization of my resource is maximum, I have done company a favor. This is a measurement, an efficiency measurement born because we are trying to save costs. And these exist. Efficiencies are controlled. Efficiencies are calculated. And end of the day, reports are made that what was the efficiency of this machine today? These utilization these utilization figures are heavily analyzed in high level meetings and we think that if the utilization of my resource goes up i will make more profit so if a company sees that in four sections the utilization has been 80 80 80 percent the company feels that i think 
I can still increase my sales by 20% and subsequently my profit should also go up by 20%. So it goes down and starts pressing more on utilization. It is partly true but not the full picture. To test this condition, let's look what we have done. Every month there is a performance review and the section which has the highest utilization is called the star performer. It can happen many times that the star performer has increased the utilization of its resources by 5%, 10% or maybe 15%. But has the profit gone up by 15%? Quite unlikely. But the reward is given to a section which shows the highest utilization. Do you think that this utilization figure that we are seeing and rewarding in one section is actually impacting the performance of a com company in a different department? For example, do you think the performance of a production department as measured by utilization is going to impact the performance of the purchasing department or the store department? Do you think the performance of a production department as measured by utilization is going to impact the performance of the purchasing department or the store department? Yes, it does. And so we install another efficiency measure in those departments. Let's talk about purchasing department. And we are thinking from the cost world. The equation still remains same. Price minus cost is equal to profit. What is in my control? Cost. I put another measurement for purchase of materials you need to keep the cost of purchase of material down. This is the mandate given to the purchasing department. And the purchasing department then starts looking at cost per unit of my product. The department sets up its own measurement targets. How to keep the purchase cost down? How to go about getting a vendor which is going to supply material at low cost? Which item can I take from my company and subcontract so that my cost of the product goes down or the material cost keeps going down? Do you think that this measurement may not finally add up to bring the cost down? Quite unlikely. It's straightforward mathematics. So what I have done is, now the big equation which I saw, I am breaking it down. The cost figure which was 1, now has been broken down. The production department cost, the material cost, now I am going to go to the labor cost. Another very important or commonly used word is labor productivity. How much is my labor producing? How much is my labor producing? This measure could be in terms of per head or it could be in terms of money. Let us go normally that I am using 100 people to do a turnover of 500 crores. My labor productivity is 5 crores per labor per year. I put in a measurement that this has to go up. That means my turnover should constantly keep going up while keeping the number of 
heads constant. Why do I do this? I have a fear that every year the salaries of my workers is going to go up. I don't talk about salaries. I simplify it. I keep the figure as numbers. Another efficiency measurement. Labor productivity. So, how can I improve this labor productivity? I tell my production department. Either you use less heads or make them work harder. Now, we know that the labor reduction cannot be done in 0.25 or 0.5. It will be always an integer. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, it becomes much tougher for the labor fellow to reduce his numbers. At a certain volume, his labor is fully utilized. The volume goes up, he needs to hire extra labor. Now, these labors may not be 100% utilized. Naturally, because he needed increase of, let us say, just 4 hours of extra labor, but he can't get one man for 4 hours only. So, he gets one man for whom he pays for 8 hours. So, now the labor productivity goes down. What does this force me to do? Listen, I think I should hire somebody on temporary basis. I should hire somebody on hourly basis. A behavior is being born. These efficiency measures are driving a behavior. Because what is my single point mandate? My single point mandate is to improve my labor productivity. And if I improve my labor productivity, my overall cost is going to go down and my profit will go up. The focus is now on increasing efficiency. We have seen that I worked on the material efficiency, the labor efficiency and the machine efficiency. Similarly, I have a transportation department. I have a measurement for my transportation department, which is called the transportation cost. Many a decisions are made based on this transportation cost. Sir, I think I can carry two tons of material, so my vehicle is waiting so that I can load two tons of material and take it. So, if I reduce my transportation cost, I think I have saved money and that money means cost and cost going down means profit. These are very nicely used efficiency measures that we see everywhere. Labor productivity, material cost, machine utilization, transportation cost. In fact, to a great extent, the argument of good quality is or the measurement of good quality is the cost of quality. Is the quality costing you some money? Do companies have a measurement which can say that if the quality was bad, what would have been the cost? So, if the cost of quality is going down, I am improving my quality. All these local measurements or efficiency measurements which have been used or are being used in a manufacturing organization come from the mindset of equation number one. Only cost is in my control. However, a question still remains. After doing so much about cost, what is being the empirical evidence in cost reduction trends in these manufacturing companies.